Hello everybody, this is the Brick Technical Guru, or Brick Tech Guru, and my name is Zaphod Beeblebrox, and today I'm going to show you some shortwave radios. Now these will actually work with the transmitter, uh, so not with the Morse code generator I built using the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now I've shown you that before. Now here is the radio that started it all. This is a little radio kit that I bought called the Pixie QRP. I soldered that together and uh, let's just say not my favourite job. Now that needs a crystal earphone like this, a 9 volt battery and this radio aerial that I made. And that's approximately 20 metres of radio aerial basically 20 meters of uh, 20 gauge wire that I just uh, string across trees and whatnot and it does pick up a signal it picks it up quite faintly I can hear it if I put the the earphone in as for recording it for the camera I don't know if I can manage that I'll probably try maybe tomorrow something like that now the benefit of the Pixie QRP is it sends transmits and receives. Um, when I bought it, I bought it on eBay. I did not realize I was buying a kit. I thought I was buying it ready assembled. Well, as soon as I realized I'd just bought a kit, I went and bought one that was ready assembled. That arrived, and it's also a kit. <laughs> no getting away from it. Well, I built it. And it works quite nicely. Um, it transmits, it receives. Now this is an S Pixie. Same thing, but I actually managed to get this for about mm, eight dollars ready built. Well, that's absolutely perfect. I haven't actually tested or tried it yet, but I, I will in time. This is a Michigan Mighty Might. Yes, that's a pill bottle, and around that pill bottle I wound the coil. Now the pill bottle happened to be the only thing that I had that was an inch and a half diameter, absolutely perfect for the coil. Um, that I built to put together with jumpers, and I keep meaning to do it, but the workshop is currently non-air conditioned and today it went up to 107 Fahrenheit right now it's on 97 Fahrenheit so you'll excuse my sweating like an absolute pig and one other thing I'm going to do this is 22 SWG enamel wire that I can turn into a radio aerial that will turn into a smaller radio aerial than this I can probably put that onto, um, onto a pencil. I have a couple of pencils with the radio aerial on. You bolt them one, one on top of the other, well, or fit them one on top of the other, slip them inside the case of the new, of the emergency uh, location radio that I'm building, that I'm working on, and it should work brilliantly. Uh, the only thing I'm waiting for at the moment is the solar panels. Now they, um, <laughs> they're coming from China and I did not realize that they were <laughs> not going to be here till July. Ugh. The number of times I've had to buy things from China and they're taking forever to arrive. Oh my goodness. So anyway, I've, um, that's where it all stands so far. Now the radio, the Pixie QRP works. I've transmitted and received on it. Um, putting the crystal earphone on, it is a little too quiet to for a microphone to pick it up. I'll have to work some other way of showing you what real Morse sounds like, but it's quite interesting when you get different Morse signals all overlaid and one on top of the other. You can pick them out because they all sound slightly different. But, um, 
that is a challenge. Now once I've got the uh, the Pixie QRP working, I might try to record some Morse and then write some software in Python on my laptop to decode the Morse. I'm not sure how that's going to work and it really shouldn't be all that hard because when you think about it what the variables are let me see you've got um, volume you've got tone and you've got duration duration and tone well, tone will tell you which Morse code signal you've got. So you can listen to several different Morse code signals and listen to the different tones. Now, when tones are overlaid one on top of the other, that could be um, an interesting challenge. I'm not sure how that's going to work. Um, but it should not be too hard to decode that. Um, having said that, I've never done anything with audio before, never decoded audio before. I've done a lot of programming in the past. Oh heck, uh, I used to code a lot in C++, a lot in uh, Pascal, Basic, COBOL. Oh my goodness, COBOL, that was so much fun. Ha <laughs> ha, we're talking 30 years ago now. I was a student in uh, West Glam Institute of Higher Education in Swansea in Great Britain. And I knew my year project didn't work. I don't think my uh, instructor was that knew it didn't work, but I certainly knew it didn't work. So um, as I was being tested, after all the system admins had gone home, I showed him the compiled version, showed him the uncompiled version of the code. He did not ask me to compile it, and I'd already compiled another version of it, which would look like the other version when it was running, but when it got to the point where it would um, uh, show that it really didn't work, I'd engineered it to crash the mainframe. So we got that far, the mainframe went down, and he said, well, okay. Mainframe's just crashed. Uh, today was the deadline, so I'm just going to have to pass you. Yes! Mission accomplished. <laughs> it's amazing what an infinite loop will do. <laughs> so, anyway. Then... Um, as you can guess, I've been coding most of my life. I've taken a break in the past 10 years. I've just picked up Python, or picking up Python, and Python's dead easy. Uh, once you know how to code, you can just pick it up any time. So I'm thinking about this uh, Morse code decoder, but I'm just thinking about it because I have other projects I want to work on as well. Um, first off, I want to get this emergency radio done, dusted, and working. After that, um, there are various versions of it that I could do, including a two-way one with Morse, Morse recognition where it's displaying the incoming Morse on a screen and allowing the user to type their outgoing text. That's one version. but. That will come after one of my uh, one or two or whatever of my other projects, because I have some other projects in mind. Uh, one of them will be a drone. I've got all the bits. I just haven't got round to it yet. I'm trying to get this thing working. When I've got this project finished, then I'll start on the next project. I don't believe in having two projects running simultaneously. That just gets completely confusing. Well, not confusing, but. Uh, you just never end up with either of them working fully. Just concentrate on one thing, get it working, then move on to the next. Another project 
is a hydrogen balloon. I've already had some experiments producing hydrogen. Um, they actually failed, but then for a very surprising reason. The stainless steel contacts turned out not to be stainless steel. <laughs> they just rusted into nothing and just left me with orange water. So hydro produce hydrogen, make a hydrogen balloon, uh, probably use a trash bag for the balloon and just have it go up with a Morse code transmitter sending out Morse code signals giving me GPS location, altitude, temperature and so on just have it going all around, around the world whether or however far it goes before the hydrogen balloon pops and um, and, and of course because it's using shortwave and uh, Morse code amateurs throughout the world can listen to it and log its location tell me where it is and whatnot um, that's the beauty of using uh, using the the, um, the 40 meter band with shortwave everybody can hear it and that's the beauty of using it for the um, emergency emergency radio beacon because amateurs are always willing to help in an emergency Anyway, that's it for now. I shall uh, talk to you again another day. And for now, I'll just say I'll talk to you again another day. Bye.